Sanctuary Knocker, the dawn, the north door of Durham Cathedral for centuries. Yeah, the yeah this is the sanctuary room. Apparently, it's the second one. Um, replica of the cathedral's famous bronze sanctuary ring. Uh, apparently, uh, convicts could knock on it, get sanctuary uh, between 1464 and 1524. The right was withdrawn by King James I, the sixth, at the union of the crown in 1624. So, apparently, the when the police used to not well, well, they used to have to after I think it was a month they used to have to carry it across to the nearest port and then be deported out to, to Europe so how true that is I don't know right let's kind of look inside This is the Galilee Chapel. It holds the tomb of Bede. This is born in AD. Six seven three. <coughs> and that's something to do with capital. There's this stuff in. Mm -hmm. 
This is in one of the Bibles. Um, yeah, it's uh, the quote, this, the text on the wall by B. is a quotation from his commentary on the second chapter of the last book of the, of the Bible, the Apocalypse of St. John, or the Book of the Revelation. This is the cloister in Durham Cathedral. It's a lovely, quiet little walk round, which had also had a couple of films hit made here, both Harry Potter films. One was the Philosopher's Stone when Harry released his pet owl, Hedwig, for a flight round Hogwarts Castle, and the other was the Chamber of Secrets. The Cloister Garth was the setting for famous for the famous scene. When Ron's eat slugs, set curse backfires. This is also where you access the calf and the bookshop. Both worth a visit. There's, there are also other films that were filmed within Durham. Uh, one was The Avengers. I think it was called The Endgame. But I don't know whether it was done in the cloisters or not. So, if you're interested, you can you can find out. Okay. Cathedral okay. is really lovely. Really is. So beautiful. I prefer it to York. I prefer going to York. Here's the information board within the cloisters, which actually tells you what was filmed here, and it also gives you other information. So it's it's quite quite good. And it also helps you out if you're interested in either the Harry Potter theme or whatever else, or the history of the cathedral. So it's worth a good read. This is the chapter house which was used for the filming location of Professor McGonagall's classroom in the first two Harry Potter films. Dame Maggie Smith's character led the lessons that saw the young students attempt to turn animals into goblets. This is only open from 10am to 4pm Monday to Saturday. Uh, some days are ex dates are excluded due to services and events. I was quite lucky that when I turned up, obviously it was opened as you see. So do try and find out before you come. This is the chapter house, which I got wrong earlier on. I'll admit, this is where the lessons for the um, Harry Potter one of the Harry Potter films, or both of them, where Professor McGonagall's were leading the students into trottle trottle to attempt to turn the animals into goblets. And as you see, it's a lovely room. 
with a layer of architecture. I think it was built in about the 14 something or other. So and these are the photos on the table to prove that the the film or films were here. So all right. This model is entirely made of Lego, Lego pad. Um, what does it say here? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Looks like the Gallivan Chapel, where we've just been into. So, all the detail. Looks like all the old graves. to the dead. <coughs> oh. This is something tough to get out. Here he's born. Up in Dunbar, up in Scotland. And then progressed into the being a monk, or a priest, or whatever you like to call it. And then um, I went to Mel Rose, Old Mel Rose, which, which went, and, but now you've got uh, there's a, an abbey there. Um, there's also a cave that he, he stayed in as a hobbit, which isn't too far from Old Mel Rose, but he stayed on Linda's farm, and it came down as far as Ripon. Um, and when he died in Lindisfarne, got invaded by the Vikings, the body was moved eventually to the cave and a few other places and one of them was Chesterley Street, I think it's St Mary and St Cuthbert's Church which was the final place before they come here. So, in the, in the, in the abbey, or the cathedral, sorry was actually built round his um, tomb or grave so we'll come to that a little bit later right. there we go. Sense. Okay. Okay. 
Cathedral now, 1541 to the present. So I'm saying, so it's more. This is the start of the one. As you see there, St. Cuthbert, blessing a monk, 1995, the Cuthbert community travelled in search for a new safe home, one of the monks receives a vision telling him St. Cuthbert wants to go to Durham, which they find with the help of a milkmaid looking for a lost cow. The community builds a small temporary church, which is soon replaced by uh, a white church. I'll, I can't say the, the other name, it's a little bit beyond me. Then you get to 998, Bishop um, starts building a stone church. So it goes on. This is Durham Cathedral's nave, uh, and it dates back, like I say, between 1093 and 1133 in the building, and is an example of Roman esque architecture and the power of the Normans. The cathedral is a spectacular setting, towering up on its great rock above the wooded horseshoe bend of the river where the, the cathedral begins with Linda's Farm Priory where St Cuthbert of Northern England's most veneered saint died in 687. Viking raids forced the residents of Linda's Farm to flee taking St Cuthbert's coffin with them and his coffin had been moved from one place to another for more than a century so it's got quite a bit of history behind you or behind it uh, and we'll be coming to his shrine in a minute so i won't give too much away at the moment
present building was built between 1093 and 1133. Placing an Anglo-Saxon white church. So I'll get that effect slightly long early on in the video. This is where the prime sits and performs. And then we continue through. Yeah, the, the woodwork in this choir when I was burned down in 1640 when the Scottish prisoners were held here. We've got rebuilt in 1662. We'll start to get rebuilt in 1662. And, uh, commissioned by Kirk Cousin. This is Thomas Hatfield's tomb. Thirteen ten to thirteen eighty one. said earlier this is uh, St Cuthbert's shrine which we're about to walk into who was born between 634 and 635 probably in Northumbria England died on the 20th of March 687 uh, on the inner farm or house off Northumbria uh, because of the Viking raids they had to move the body around uh, and they went up to St Mary's and St Cuthbert's in Chesterley Street which was there for about 112 years so and then it got moved to Durham where they built the where, where the followers and that built the the cathedral so this is so Durham was actually built round his shrine, which not a lot of people realise. From what I understand, St Cuthbert's body has been exhumed a couple of times. Um, so it has changed slightly over the years, but this is the, the final um the shrine that we've got today and it, it's absolutely beautiful around it the, the little stained glass windows i couldn't quite get some of them as you see because of the the sun coming through the the windows so which is a bit of a shame but anyway i hope you've enjoyed it
sorry about the silence here and there, but they were playing the organ and I'm having to do part of this voice over because this is where they've done the, the, the organ for a bit. So I'm trying to avoid copyright. So once again, sorry, if it, if it descends into silence, you know the reason why. I wish I could talk more about the, the cathedral, but I'm just going to let you enjoy the windows and everything else. Enjoy the rest of the video.